good morning i welcome you all for this some different session on sunday morning and we have a senior neurologist speaking us on meditation art and science rather meditation its techniques and its science all of us know dr sudhir shah is a senior neurologist is a professor and hod in a municipal hospital in ahmedabad also he is director of neurosciences in sterling group of hospitals he is senior neurologist and of course uh, consultant to the governor of gujarat he is also executive member of indian academy of neurology advisor on world yoga federation he has conferred most prestigious padma shri award in 2016 he is also innovator of contemplative neurology sub group of indian academy of neurology so let us start something different over to you dr sudhir shah sir please hello good morning to all of you and uh, i must thank dr kotari dr devashish and sadas and professor matran for chairing this session and also thankful to all of you that you are all here in the early morning of the sunday and have a wonderful akshay tutiya this is a very auspicious day today uh, the topic today is meditation its techniques and its science now this is a very vast and deep subject like an ocean and it cannot be finished in uh, one hour what uh, i can do is i can give an overview uh, of this subject uh, first part i will talk of the ancient wisdom which are the techniques of meditation which is not usually found in our routine books it takes you know it took almost 15 to 20 years for me to collect all this wisdom while the second part the modern science i will speak few lines on that but you could find in the uh, net and pubmed etc etc also well over the 15 years whatever i gathered i want to give this my best tip to all of you and i wish that you use this uh, uh, in you know introspection and if, if some of you are inspired with this i'll be more than happy the first question that comes is why meditation when you will ask me why we should do meditation some say i don't enjoy meditation some people say it's very difficult we we'll try to answer those questions first i start with a quote of rumi he said please do me a little favor search your own self within yourself while referring to the utility of meditation he said this profound statement please do me a little favor अप अपने आप के अंदर अपनी आप की जांच करो एंड दैट इज मेडिटेशन लॉर्ड बुद्ध सेड ही वाज सी अ वेरी बेसिक पर्सन ही यूज्ड टू अवॉइड ऑल एजोटेरिक क्वेश्चन अबाउट सोल एंड रीबर्थ एंड एक्सेट्रा ही सेड व्हाट इज मोस्ट पर्टिनेंट टू ऑल ऑफ अस लुक वी ऑल आर सफरिंग दैट देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम देयर इज अ पेन एवरीबॉडी हु इज ऑन द अर्थ इज सफरिंग सो दैट देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम एंड देन ही सेड दैट इफ देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम देयर हैज टू बी अ कॉज and then if there is a cause there has to be a way and then the fourth important statement he gave these are all called four noble truths of buddha if you follow that path you will get the solution and based on that he gave the astang samyak mark and their shil samadhi pragya where meditation was one of the most important thing same way lord mahavir also in upanishad and vedanta everywhere the importance of meditation has been given so friends pain is inevitable but the suffering is optional and that if you want to get rid of suffering we have to learn introspection and meditation we exist in three forms body mind and for those of us who believe in the soul or at least consciousness now the science also accept consciousness our all activities of the day right from morning to night right from earning fame to money and everything is body centric but we absolutely ignore the faculty of our mind and that is most creates the problems secondly all of us are in the quest of peace and happiness everybody wants peace and happiness and we all move out and look for happiness and peace in worldly objects and gatherings and possessions and fame and money and all that at some stage we realize that no peace and happiness are not outside and those lucky of us try to do introspection and that introspection is meditation 
you know what our inner core is full of happiness and peace but we search happiness and peace outside but the inner core is, is totally obscured with the activities of mind and which are those our aspirations or thoughts our emotions or perversions our ego our attitude our attachment the fact that the mind wanders between past and future all these ignorance these are the root cause of happy unhappiness if we work on these and remove this problem there then the whole inner core inner concept is full of happiness so while we introspect and remove all these fallacies and miseries that process is called meditation those of us who are in the quest of god or self realization these all great people have done meditation so we have to do meditation made me lord mahavir lord buddha lord shiva lord jesus ashodas and in the recent years krishna murti ji vivekanand ji ram ramana maharshi and so many western saints they are all doing meditation so meditation is a must for those who want to achieve peace and happiness by having understood that happiness and peace is not outside and the root cause of our miseries are our own thoughts perceptions ego attitude etc so what is meditation meditation is an exercise of mind to keep it healthy and clean it is grooming of the body it as we do for our body it is grooming of our mind as we do for our body neurology is a state of altered consciousness some say it is fourth state of consciousness it's a spiritual ecstasy with neurological manifestation they are not really hallucination before 1995 all of the neuropsychiatrists they felt that hallucination and yogic activities are all hallucination there is no actual biological representation in the brain but after the seminal experiments particularly of dr andrew newberg among others we understood that meditation is a neurobiological process with a specific set of neurophysiological neuroelectrical neurochemical sequences and these all event can be really captured into fmri stacked and other equipment but the question is that these are all subjective experiences and can we really capture everything that you feel on the biological machine no there are limitations so all these meditative and other experiences can to some extent be taken up on the machines by everything cannot be so there is a limitation of science so there are certain definitions which are available some say it is stability of mind meditation according to others is concentration on one object according to some it is nothing but unified thought process intensely some say no it is thoughtlessness some say it is introspection some say it is intentional self regulation and what not well all these things are correct they are complementing each other and we, as we go through presentation we will realize that uh, these are all uh, truth i need your full attention because this is a very very deep and vast subject and requires full concentration the dictionary definition of meditation is thinking deeply or spiritually about a subject it's a very complex cognitive task it is more than relaxation concentration contemplation or posturing or so to say it is a combination of all this that's why all these definitions we saw earlier are correct it ultimate of goal of meditation is enlightenment or illumination we'll see that in the scientific experiment somebody may ask you know, wow if i do meditation what will i gain what will be the advantage at the primary superficial level yes there are a lot of advantages like physical mental and emotional health it also helps in partial control of cure of some of the psychosomatic disorders including high blood pressure coronary disease diabetes asthma rheumatism etc we'll see that later also it relieves the stress it helps in better concentration sharpness 
all of us who are doing meditation, they have felt that it's really very easy to get concentration, sharpness, stress relief, etc. It improves job performance, it improves interpersonal relationships, attitude, uh, it brings inner peace, patience, happiness, it cultivates all positive emotions, improves quality of life, improves control of anger and fear, and there are intuitive knowledge and healing power also. So, what is the uh, neurochemistry of uh, stress and neurochemistry of meditation? They are diagonally opposite. Stress is over, overactivity of sympathetic system. You know that the pulse is raised, PT is raised, the uh, respiration goes fast. While meditation is a yogic mode where pulse is slow, respiration is slow, blood pressure falls, the person is calm, serene, etc. So, that way, meditation is an antidote to stress. Those of us who are in stressful situations, we should do meditation day. However, there are certain cautions. It is not a push button system. You need patience. There is a very high dropout rate I've seen. You need to have right guide, right method, correct understanding, appropriate place, constant practice, extreme faith, and full conviction. Like even if right now, if I start giving you technique of meditation and try ask you to do meditation, you won't be able to do it because you require perfect understanding, correct methodology and constant practice. In meditation, we don't have to sleep. It's the awareness process. The meditation industry is at a high, there's a booming, there's a lot of commercialization. There are people who sell meditation for certain dollars. No, that is not the way. This is a sacred science and Everybody must uh, learn it's, it's kind of a priceless thing and you cannot learn with commercial way. Another thing that one should not make comparison with different systems. Some say that my system is great, other systems are not good. No. The moment the ego and comparison comes, that means you have not learned the basics of meditation. You have to respect all the systems. And that is how a meditator is taught from the beginning. Krishna would be used to say meditation is hard work. It demands the highest form of discipline which comes through constant awareness. Not only of the things about you outwardly, but also inwardly. According to him, meditation is effortless, choiceless awareness. Remember these words. Effortless, choiceless awareness is meditation. We have seen the advantages at the physical, mental, emotional, and job, etc. level. But the real purpose, according to the spiritual text, meditation is to teach us to remain in the present moment. Most of our miseries are because our mind is literally fluctuating between past and future. The past grudges and all those uh, wrong things that happen to you, kind of depression. While well, future is anxiety. What will happen to all of this situation, the disease everywhere, etc. What will happen to me? While this present moment is full of peace and happiness. So meditation primarily teaches us to remain in the present moment. Meditation is meant to make us learn how to eliminate our ego and how to eliminate the activities of mind. You remember those activities of mind we discussed, the aspiration, the uh, the perceptions, the perversions, the attachment, uh -huh. ego, attitude, all these things are the activities of mind. Mana, buddhi, chitta, hankar. And these are the root cause of our miseries. We discussed that. And meditation teaches us to get rid of all these uh, activities, thoughts, desires, etc. And that's how one can be peaceful and happy. And that we will see in the derivation of scientific experiments also. So meditation is uh, uh, basically ultimately meant for self-realization, for those who believe in God-realization, for total bliss, total relief of pain, as Buddha used to tell, and that way total liberation. So next question is, how do we do meditation? These all have been compiled from different Adams, Tripitak, Vedanta, and different uh, 
books of meditation from Bhairav and this and that. We'll give the reference at the end if you wish. So these meditation techniques are basically divided into different eight parts. One is either you do focus on breathing or you do focus on an object or focus on the sound, focus on the thought, focus on the sensual object, focus on sensory perception or imagery or sound. Now, this such a deep science, like on focus on breathing, there could be contemplation or concentration. Either you concentrate on breathing or contemplate. We'll see that. Like focus on a sound, you create a sound, you chant a sound, say Om, Om Rim, Namo Narayana, etc. sound, or you listen to a sound, or sit in a quiet place where all sounds are less and less and then you try to focus on the most distant sound coming from a different part and then you focus on that. So either you create or you listen to sound. So there are different ways and like on a thought, whether you concentrate on a thought, let the whole universe heal in the current situation. That is a thought. You focus on that thought and continuously you're basically think on that thought without giving any attention to any other thought focus on a single thought or you can do contemplation let all thoughts pass through your screen of mind one by one as it is without criticizing them just bare neutral awareness and that is called focus on the thought so these are different techniques and we don't have that much time but we'll try to see some of them Meditation includes a complex group of techniques belonging to different cultural traditions. It's not true to say that meditation was only available in Indian context or oriental science. Of course, in India, Buddhism, Jainism, and yogic uh, systems, particularly Vedanta, etc., they had developed a very high level of uh, meditative techniques, particularly Patanjali Yoga system, etc. But the Chinese system also, Taoism and Jain Buddhism has also developed their own techniques. In Western tradition, Christian, Hebrew, and Islamic mystic currents are also very well developed. When you want to do meditation, first you have to choose a constant place and select the atmosphere. For initial few months, do at the same place in the same atmosphere the same time of the day in a sitting posture, you don't have to lie down. The time of meditation should be fixed, either early morning or late at night. You do consistent practice daily and you have to observe show four priorities. Your mouth should be clean, your body should be clean, the place should be clean and your clothes should be clean. The attitude that we have to develop or apply during meditation is bare attention or neutral witness, nothing else. Just be aware, effortless, choiceless awareness. Pure moment to moment awareness or mindfulness, non judgmental inner listening, any friendliness. For the beginners, they can start with prayer or do some little pranayam so that the activities of mind, the fluctuation of mind becomes lesser and lesser and you can concentrate a little uh, easily. But it's not necessary always to do all this before meditation. Now, coming back to those system techniques, the focus on breathing, focus on object. Etc. Now, science has divided into three broad categories. One is called focus attention, the other is called open monitoring system, and third is called transcendental meditation. The Patanjali Yoga system. These are the different tech methods out of those eight techniques. There are 120 methods and then there are thousands of different modifications. You can make your own modification. Patanjal, Anapan, Sati, Smuti, Vipassana, Preksha, these are supposed to be the oldest in Indian system. As I mentioned, all methods are great. So don't try to compare them. Whatever suits you, you should do. Yoga Nidra, Kriya Yoga, Mrityu Dhyan, Transcendental Meditation of Vaish Yogi, Kundalini, Jain, Mindfulness Meditation, etc. These are all very standard and easily taught techniques and you can learn online also. I'll try and uh, 
talk about uh, three systems uh, in brief and then we move on to the scientific part also so patanjal rishi was the uh, uh, great sage who wrote uh, patanjal yoga sutra as uh, makrand uh, used to mention last sunday's talk this is one of the profound books and he said that the ultimate goal of human existence is samadhi where you, there is non dual ex experience of the existence you are part of the universal existence universal consciousness and that is the total stage of bliss there is no ego there are no activities of mind like thoughts desires perceptions perversions ego attitude etc no attachment also but to attain that state dhyan the seventh step is the most important step but he said that every tom dick and harry cannot log into meditation and then samadhi one has to go through certain purification processes first is yama then niyama then asan pranayam pratyahar then dharana dhyan and so so one has to observe self certain self constraint and self restraint like non violence truth non stealing celibacy satya ahimsa aparigraha brahmacharya etc etc these are the five major woes of uh, indian spiritual context you know that then there are five niyam we said purity austerity some kind of penance then santosh self satisfaction spiritual learning worship dedication these are all niyams that would make you qualify for the further step so yeah many then asan what we call yoga yoga today is nothing but the third part of the eight fold path of patanjali just asan is posture so that you are taking charge of your body your body remains still in a particular posture for hours together when you do dhyan and samadhi so you have to qualify your body then you take charge of your pran that is called pranayam then pratyahar withdraw senses from the different aspects and then you do dharana and dhyan and samadhi and this is a very advanced science how actually meditation helps you know eliminate the different thoughts and uh, ego etc but we don't have much time but this is a very logical system here we have to focus on an object or a place or a thought or a chakra or flame or photo with eyes open and then later close and you develop such a kind of intense concentration that at one stage the activities of mind are gone and the observer becomes identified with the object and there is no faculty of mind so there is a non dual experience later on because faculty of mind is removed and we have to actually do it to uh, to feel it because it is not something which we can explain in words the other important uh, method is uh, anapansati and here it's very easy and simple thing and if time permits we will try and do this session for 5 10 minutes um there here you have to bring the attention to the breath but you don't have to control the breathing it is not pranayam you have to see your natural breathing that comes in and goes out give full attention to the feeling of breath as it goes in and out dwell in the present moment by moment breath by breath you have to observe your mind with moment to moment awareness effortless choiceless awareness when you try to focus on your breath like breath comes in goes out comes in goes out just focus your mind there on the process of breathing and then the third or fourth breathing cycle your mind will start wondering it'll go to usa or go to corona or this or that or what i am going to eat today don't worry note this and bring gently back to the awareness back to the brain this happens to all beginners and all of us we have the same problem but after months and years of experience we are able to focus on the brain for minutes to hours even so why breathing so the logic is why you want to focus on breathing because there are two truths we know one is that we are born and other that we are going to die 
In between, there is a third truth that we are living and we are living because we are breathing, in a way. So breathing is a truth of our existence. So when we are focusing on breathing, we are focusing on truth. And that way, one day we will reach to the ultimate truth. Breathing is vital. Without breath, we will not be here. Therefore, we are focusing on vital. And therefore, vitality is most important. We will take you to the vital. It is secular. There is nothing like Hindu, Mohammedan, Jesus, etc. This is all secular. So anybody can do it. Even atheists can do it. Breathing is always with you. You don't have to carry a photo or it is a murti, etc. So it is always all the 24 of us with you. So it's very easy. While breathing, you are learning to remain in the present tense. So it's a very good exercise. More importantly, breathing carries your emotions and thoughts. Try thinking. When you are angry, what happens? Your breath goes fast and you know, is sympathetic also your breathing also becomes faster if you have compassion on somebody your breathing becomes slow and quiet if you have jealousy for something your breathing becomes heavier so all different emotions and thought and perversions travel on the vehicle of brain when you are learning to focus on brain it, it serves as a feedback mechanism and therefore if something goes wrong with your breathing you always try to look back what is wrong with your emotions, etc. So this is a very wonderful technique and you can try doing this. Just focus on breath once, go in and out. As if the mind is the sentry sitting at the tip of your nose and just focusing on the breath that comes in and goes out. Continue to watch the breath, accepting each moment to moment for a few minutes to hours, not to lose a single breath. Lord Buddha said, that if you can focus for continuous 48 minutes on breathing without losing a single breath, then you become uh, enlightened. Similarly, you can do meditation on uh, your thoughts. As I mentioned, either you focus on a single thought and continuously concentrate on that positive thought or just observe the volume of thoughts that crosses your mind. By observing your thoughts, you realize that all thoughts are empty, they are contradictory, they don't carry anything, they are just painful and creates a lot of nuisance to yourself. And once you continue seeing your thoughts, you try to become dead from the thought. And that is the idea of Smriti Upasthana. In Jain meditation also, we are taught to learn Kayotsa, Samai, Pratikraman, the Jain religion is a bhav dharma, so meditation of utmost importance. And here we do qualitative meditation of thoughts also, and several types of kriya, dhanti bhed, etc. Ultimately, Jainism, what is taught is you have to focus on your soul by your own soul. Consciousness, focusing on your own consciousness, and without remaining unaware for a single second. Be aware of your thoughts, guard your thoughts, guard your voice, the words, and guard your action. That is the Jain meditation. Similarly, the sound meditation, do chanting on a mantra, its meaning and vibration, and how different sounds affect even the crystals of water. There are experiments by Emoto amongst others, and you can uh, literally uh, you know, study that on net. So it sounds as a terrific effect on body systems, uh, all living organisms. Vipassana is something uh, exceptionally important amongst all of us. It's also a very good technique. I don't want to say that this is the best, but this is a very uh, structured system. Uh, I, I've undergone Vipassana also. And here we have to observe the breathing for first three and a half days, followed by six and a half days. Uh, we have to focus on the sensations that uh, arise on different parts of our body. They may be calm, they may be hot, they may be pleasant, they may be unpleasant, they may be harsh, they may be uh, very uh, easy, sometimes it's pins and needles. So different sensations arise in different parts of the body in bunches and we have to see them without getting caught into them with neutral awareness. That 
ultimately brings uh, to the fact that these are all transient shine. So your attachment to your body and its processes are literally gone. Ultimately, you get detached from thoughts, you get detached from the emotions and perversions, and ultimately you have detachment from your body and uh, you become enlightened and elevated. So Vipassana is an operation of the mind by the mind. Here the surgeon is also mind, calm and quiet mind, awake and attentive mind, equanimous mind, etc. etc. Another technique is a mindful technique, observing the body and mind intentionally, letting experiences unfold from moment to moment and accepting them as they are. You just to be bare neutral awareness. Observing thoughts without getting caught in them and no effort. You don't have to make any effort to control except the focus and direction of attention. It's not a passive process, but you, it does not involve getting, you know, trying to get anywhere. In this, you reach to some stage where while you think, well, you are eating, you are meditating. While you are sitting, you are meditating. While you are working, you are meditating. And meditating during each act is wonderful. So awareness of every second, moment to moment, of all your activities, your words, and your thoughts, that is mindfulness. And that is now very much uh, prevalent in foreign countries. They are doing for a lot of research studies also. Transcendental meditation was uh, a technique propounded by Maharshi Yogi, and uh, it is also very interesting. Uh, this is a photo of the cover magazine of uh, uh, Life, uh, Life magazine of cover photo, where an actress is levitating after transcendental meditation. I brought this to tell you that meditation is not for showing up. As I mentioned, meditation is. Uh, your meditation is uh, not for all these things. It is for elimination of ego or elimination of your mind and all those things. So be very careful. And, uh, okay. Uh, then I have uh, brought Sri Sri Ravi Shankarji Sudarshan Kriya. I think. Uh, Kalandika had, uh, had mentioned this last time, art of living course, it has changed thousands of lives here. There is so hum type of meditative system and uh, we can take it into question. Then uh, Ramanji taught about the silence contemplation. Uh, who am I? The question you have to ask in silence and that in silence, the heart, uh, it, in the silence of the heart, God speaks. So, he taught us to do small things with great love. Similarly, Mother Teresa taught us to do uh, service and that way meditation. Then there are Dhyan Yoga, Tata, dynamic meditation. And so there are lots of many systems. We can go on for hours and hours. And I've done some of them uh, very meticulously. Some of them I've read, but I've found that all techniques are, all methods are good and you can choose any for yourself. Sapna Dhyan, Nidra Dhyan, Yoga Nidra, Nyas, Sufi system, Jain system, all these different. So this is the Sufi meditation. In Chinese system, there is Qigong or Tajik Wen and some other meditation systems. And the aim is awareness and self-knowledge by wise use of imagination, sensory development, motor control, and bringing perfect balance of body system. So it's a development of internal energy. You know that Tai Chi and Qigong, these are the technical words, positive and negative according to them. And so develop internal energy to become a symbol of cosmos. And this is uh, one of their techniques. Be that good, but I just wanted to show how you know different uh, people have learned and created different metric system. 
so meditation for the beginner you have to remain in present tense and non judgmental awareness first you practice silence of body then be speechless so silent by speech then learn to get isolated then you can start either with the sound meditation chanting or seeing an idol by observe object meditation or inner flame meditation or you do breathing technique and then you can go into another deeper and deeper systems so now next 10 minutes will spend on the uh, scientific aspects having uh, observed a lot of techniques the common denominator of all these techniques is that oxygen consumption is reduced during meditation by 16% even greater than the reduction of 20% in the sleep so it is a, a winner situation neural structures that are intimately related to the control of autonomic nervous system are activated diurnal cyclic secretion of stress hormones there is acetate cortisol etc is absent here so there are lots of papers on net you will find there are thousands and thousands of papers how meditation may help heal or control partially or to 40 to 70 percent you know reduction of arthritis allergies asthma hypertension coronary atrial bowel syndrome heartburn constipation tension headache migraine menopause system problems pms pain in the back hip knees depression anxiety substance abuse skin disorder chronic fatigue overweight sleep problems all these you will find and you will be surprised that the maximum work is done on depression anxiety in uh, vipassana system in uh, mindful meditation in uh, transcendental meditation and so on so even if you want to get rid of your psychological problems also to some extent it helps and there are some of the papers which i don't have time but uh, in cancer depression anxiety in the chronic pain chronic pain of uh, back ache and others anxiety panic disorder fibromyalgia psoriasis carotid artery wall thickness coronary artery regression of the plaques and hospital admission and all heart disease etc lot of papers some of them are seminal peer reviewed papers are published and you can browse on the net and find out but i want to tell you again meditation is not advised uh, for primarily for relief of disease cure it is it's something very high thing it helps you relieve of your all uh, thoughts emotions perversions ego attitude this is a very highly evolved system as a by product because these are psychosomatic disorders they are relieved that's okay but that is not your primary goal so who cannot do meditation those who have psychosis severe depression confusional states extreme anxiety dementia they should not do meditation meditation produces specific physiological response pattern that involves various biological systems mechanisms producing meditative effects include autonomic metabolic neurological endocrine and psychological system this primarily these five systems are involved and there's been studied extensively physiological responses to meditation occurs on a multi dimensional interactive basis and we'll see some of them as time permits first of all neuroelectrical effects as we are neurologists we are interested so as i mentioned earlier the three major systems are focus attention open monitoring and transcendence depending on those uh, system you have either increase alpha activity increase theta production increase high beta activity like if you are in a highly concentration type of meditation then you will have high beta activity beyond 40 or sometimes that is gamma also alpha patterns are associated with calm and focus attention theta patterns are associated with reverie contemplation techniques imagery and creativity mindfulness also brings this thing. high beta activity is associated with highly focused concentration so called as tratak system surya sen so the meditation brain wave pattern is a combination of alpha and theta where theta provides the depth and profundity of the meditation experience the subconscious 
inner space from where your insight, your creativity, your healing, your judgment, etc. springs. And alpha provides the bridge or the link to the conscious thinking mind so that you are actually aware and remember the content of your meditation. Very interesting. And this is, a, you can literally feel it by your experience when you do deep meditation. Davidson's experiments on EEG are well uh, acclaimed and he, if we, we could detect that in chronic meditative states, you can have actual gamma wave, the high level information processing, transcendent signal, what we call is found in many meditations. That is a neural electrical part. Even for those who are doing first time meditation for 30 minutes, then you can have a uh, change in uh, beta, the beta reduced in the frontal and that's, that has been also uh, documented in various experiments. So even first 30 minutes experience of meditation can produce some change. The minimum experience of meditation should be 30 minutes. In meditation, the usual framework of time, space and other aspects of consciousness content are absent, although the mind is not asleep. Compared to quiet or slow wave sleep, in which the brain blood flow is reduced, meditation shows no reduction in total brain blood circulation or permission. Very interesting. How it differs from sleep, there is no change in blood flow. And the usual framework of time, space and other aspects of consciousness are absent. So the mind, mind is there, but it does not operate. Regional maps of brain blood flow perfusion differ amongst meditation, slow wave sleep and wakefulness. So neurobiology of meditation. There are lots of experiments, uh, I'll show one of them. Imaging like uh, regional cerebral blood flow, real time MRI, magnetoencephalogram and improved EEG techniques have done, uh, allowed detailed studies in understanding the effects of meditation on neural structure, neural circuitry and the behavior. The SPECT study shows that the parietal area of the brain, which is responsible for giving us the sense of orientation to time and space, and by blocking all sensory and cognitive input to this area, uh, meditation results in the sense of no space and no time. How? I'll show you. So these are the different uh, uh, technologies that we use in meditation. This is Professor Andrew Newberg. He is one of the pioneer in the research of meditation. I had a chance to work with him during my uh, experiments on prolonged fasting and uh, he used to work in Lupin and uh, his paper on Buddhist Lama was the game changer. And to cut the matter short, what he showed that this is a baseline scan of spect of meditator and this is during meditation up 30, 45 minutes. He said that the blood flow in the prefrontal cortex during meditation is increased two to three times and there is increased cerebral blood flow showing that there is increased cognitive processing, judgment, higher prioritization, executive function, all those prefrontal low working memory, etc. This becomes very sharp and increased during meditation and those who do meditation for years on uh, daily regularly they have increased intellectual levels increased cognition in indian context we call it pragna medha buddhi so there is increased uh, cognitive functions in meditators and that is shown with these experiments in 2001 two and three papers and then he wrote the book called why gods will not go away. I recommend that you read that book. The second important change he found that this is the parietal area. He said that during the deep meditation, the uh, blood flow in the posterior parietal lobule, on the, particularly on the left side, goes uh, offline, it is reduced. And this being the area of orientation to time, space, person, connection with the prefrontal and temporal circuits. Uh, he said that uh, during the deep meditation on 40, 30, 45 minutes, a person becomes unaware of uh, time, space. So his ego is not manifested. He, his thoughts, his emotions, 
his or her perceptions, perversions, and his attachments are reduced. So all the faculties of mind, which are the root cause of our miseries, are manifested through these. And therefore, the mind becomes identified with the universal mind. Man may say aman hone ki prakriya and the uh, higher prakriya, the vikas of uh, higher cognition. These two derivations he found from his experiments. And of course, some of them were repeated in different uh, other experiments and many of them were reproducible. The point is why the things differ in different techniques because some meditative techniques operate from the concentrations of the frontal lobe. The contemplative techniques operate from the parietal lobe. The transcendent signal operates from the thalamus and the hypothalamus and the uh, hippocampus. So although the common denominators are the same, but you cannot really compare these in the experiments and therefore you get some confusion and some problems in you know uh, so you will find that uh, all these techniques have uh, some issues in scientific uh, explanation and derivation well science apart as i said these are all matters of uh, experience and all experiences are mere subjective phenomena they cannot be really reduced to all uh, uh, biological and simple physiological phenomena. Even the prayer scans mention that there is autonomic and uh, parasympathetic blood flow is increased. So if you do deep prayer, like a meditation, you can have group autonomic output. So this was this bad thing. So friends, I want to tell you that people have proved that uh, meditation is not merely hallucination and so. Even fMRI experiments have shown that there is significantly increase observed in the dorsolateral, prefrontal, and parietal cortices, thalamus, hippocampus, parahippocampus, temporal lobe, pregenual and anterior cingulate cortex, RACC striatum. So different areas were uh, uh, having increased activity, and these activations was documented in uh, uh, fMRI. Most types of meditation which involve an initial focusing of attention are associated with increased regional blood flow or glucose metabolism in the prefrontal and cingulate cortex, areas that are important in selection of a mental task. The frontal lobe, especially the prefrontal region, helps in organization, prioritization, plan, focus attention, etc. In visualization, different parts are activated. So this is a thalamus, this is a reticular activating system. Thalamus is the gatekeeper of the senses. The reticular activating system is a sentry. And uh, this controls the funneling of ex uh, different senses. So the frontal lobe is the most highly evolved part of the brain responsible for, for reasoning, planning, emotions, and self-conscious awareness. During meditation, the frontal cortex tends to be offline. In parietal lobe, as I mentioned, this part of the brain processes sensory information about the surrounding world, orienting into time and space. And during meditation, activity in the parallel lobe goes down. Therefore, you no longer uh, manifest in form of a higher ego. So these are the different ways of you know explaining the outcomes of meditation. Activity in hippocampus is increased in connection with the hypothalamus and autonomic nervous system and therefore your pulse, your respiration, your blood pressure goes low, you, be, you come into yogic mode, your amygdala is in, uh, showing in differential blood flow, therefore your fear and phobia is reduced. This is a complex uh, system that shows how different circuits op operate in meditation, left ears, etc. And I don't have time to go into details, but these are the most important papers which have been uh, so far uh, published out of 400 papers, 24 papers are considered the landmark papers. And then uh, during fMRI, what kind of activities do we see, like abstract perception of joy, symbolic presentation of self, when you focus on consciousness or consciousness focus on the self, you get this type of fMRI activity. So again, during the concentration, transcendental and open monitoring system, you have different aspects of the fMRI correlates like frontal, thalamus, parietal, etc., which you could uh, probably read. There are several neurochemical changes. Serotonin increases, so your mood and behavior improves. 
acetylcholine increases, so memory is improved, melatonin is increased, so your sleep uh, becomes deep and fine. And these are the different uh, diagrammatic and schematic presentation of uh, different neurochemicals, the changes observed and the CNA structures where you see these changes. And these have been uh, depicted. Meditation also affects the central nervous system by decreasing muscle reflex time, changes neurotransmitter, thereby decreasing synapse time, by increasing left cortical hemisphere, the sense of time and logic no longer dominate consciousness. And therefore, as I mentioned again and again, the ego faculty and the faculties of mind uh, are suppressed. So you take charge of your mind, your thoughts, your ego attitude, etc. We must mention a couple of lines on default network because ultimately default network, dorsal attention network, seminal network, there are five, six important networks you should know about the brain. During meditation, uh, it is said that default network is more active. What is default network? Using past experiences to plan for the future, to navigate social interactions, to maximize the utility of moments when we are not engaged by the external world your autobiographic memory, your planning for future, all these operates in the default network. While you are introspecting deeply, you are doing meditation, it is a default network that really becomes operational. But there are some uh, specific uh, comments on this. Uh, however, in general, this is what it is. So friends, what is the ultimate outcome? The hypothesis that has been created, the working hypothesis is that meditation acts as a constant repetitive stimulus uh, creating permanent qualitative and quantitative changes on the nervous system. Neurotransmitters and neuromodulators may stimulate growth of dormant neurons, which are there. So you know that there are so many neural pathways and neurons are dormant. And here during meditation, because of constant repetition, there is a permanent change, so new neurons are activated, higher center, higher than neurocortex, is there, they call it G module or quad module. And these higher center will exhibit inhibitory control over the present neocortex and thereby over mind as a whole, thereby suppressing mental activities. Spiritual ascent is from the least evil state of consciousness to near perfect state where the mind itself will cease and remain in the only neon dual experience. There are some extents of neuroplasticity. A recent MRI studies show that brain regions associated with attention, interoception, and sensory processing, like <clears throat> prefrontal cortex and RACC and insula, they are thicker in chronic meditators. So meditation probably offsets age-related cortical thinking. So probably prevents dementia and uh, you know learn, learning disorders. These are the latest seminal papers in 2020 published in Nature. Telomere length correlates with subtelomeric DNA methylation in long-term mindfulness practitioners. Mindfulness meditation activates altruism. Meditation psychology and the last few slides. Practice of meditation improves cognitive task performance, increases mental concentration, and reduces susceptibility to stress. Both uh, subjective and objective examination reveal that meditation enhances perceptual sensitivity. Friends, meditators have in different attitude and different personality. They, they don't look at the world as we see normally. Their attitude is different. They are compassionate, loveful. They are egoless and they want to help everybody and they are not concerned with their self-occupations, their collectiveness or getting fame or money or whatever. They just are there to help. Look at the great saints like Raman Maharshi, Ramakrishna Paramahansa Vivekananda. These are the people who have changed the attitude because of meditation. And those techniques, if we adapt, we can also become the same. I'm convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitude. So meditation, dear friends, changes the attitude. Everything we hear is an opinion. It may not be fact. Everything we see is a perspective. It may not be the truth. Everything we feel is a perception. It may not be the reality. 
and everything is likely to change. So, friends, be judgmental and strive after your own truth. Whatever I said is my opinion. It may not be your truth. So you strive for your own truth. I've just given you a few highlights of this different world and different field. Some of you may be more advanced in the system of meditation. You may be doing much more than me. But my idea was here to give a gift to all my colleagues. Whatever little I have learned, drop in the ocean, what I have learned, I just want to share. At the end, I want to mention that there are certain unresolved issues, new frontiers in meditation. Although we can understand how the various lobes and neurotransmitters function during meditation, how are these actions directed and by whom, we don't know. What accounts for the actual awareness of the experience and of the self and where are they perceived, we don't know. How do we actually know that something is true and meaningful? What accounts for this conviction, we don't know. And the link with the master within and with the cosmic consciousness as has been propounded by some people has not been explained and cannot be approached from a neuroscience perspective. So neuroscience can give some kind of similes and explanations, but it cannot really explain the spiritual experiences in full way. So friends, this is Lord Buddha. These are we people. And if we do really meditation, we can become Buddha. Lord Osho said that I'm not here to teach you anything, but I'm here to awaken you. Lord Buddha said, new, Last sentence on the day where now monks, I have nothing more to tell. I have nothing more to tell you, but all that is composed will decay. Whatever has been composed, everything in the world around us is composed, it will decay. Strive up to all salvation. Vivekananda's last sentence was, wait and meditate till I call you back. And Lord Mahavir used to say, don't be unaware for a fraction of a second. Be aware, attentive. Watch your every thought, watch your every word, watch your every action. And be in a meditative state. Friends, these are the references. I've taken references from Jain Agam, Dhyan Deepika, Dhyan Shatak, Patanjal Yoga Sutra, Holy Vedra, Sripitak, Dhyan Yoga, Meditation by Osho, Hill, Krishna Murtiji, and Gilmar. Medical references are from several journals like this. And I was fortunate enough to give the presentation to Dalai Lama Ji, to, to uh, great sages, including the <coughs> contemporary saints also. These are other references. And uh, I, I want to tell you that uh, this may be a beginning this is a COVID time. We are at lockdown in the room, in our home. So we should look inside and start meditating. And that is the best way to utilize this great time. Thank you very much. Shall I start? Close your eyes. Slow down your breath. Remove the glass and listen to the sound. Om. Focus on the vibration, focus on the meaning of Om, and be with Om. That's it. Just be with the sound.
Yes. Hello. How did you feel about this uh, practical meditation? Do you enjoy? Yes, sir. Definitely. And uh, shall we take few questions, sir? At least there are many yes, that I saw. Yes. What I what I feel important. Um, someone has asked. Uh, has regular meditation improved your patient outcomes? Yes, in fact, uh, I have been asking some of my patients to do uh, meditation and their uh, outcome is also improved and even my output is improved because uh, uh, I am, if I compare myself what I was before 20 years and what I am now, I think my attitude, my personality, my outlook to the problems is changed. So both ways, they have stimulated. This is what my personal experiences also I can tell you. Then sir, other question is, uh, um, stomach should be adequately filled and sleep should be adequate. This is what Vivekananda books have mentioned before doing meditation. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, the system that Vivekananda said was regarding the uh, object meditation, that was the Patanjal system. And here uh, it is true that if you get a proper sleep at night and do meditation early in the morning, it is better. Regarding food, uh, I think uh, there is some misunderstanding. It should be done mainly on empty stomach as most of the people say. If you do in uh, late in night, then yes, uh, your food should be at least two hours before and then you can do meditation. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to do it very well. And some people experience some lights, especially near bead point of eyebrows or mid forehead, different, different colors. What are their different meanings? What are your thoughts on? Uh, that has been described in various texts, but that comes after an experience of a few months and years. I don't think uh, it starts. So there may be some kind of imagination also for the early people. But yes, all great uh, books have mentioned that when you constantly focus through object meditation, first you focus outside on some uh, flame or pointed thing or, or photograph of a deity and then you internalize that in between two eyebrows uh, they call it agya chakra and then when you internalize that flame or point bindi, then after some times uh, the agna chakra becomes active i don't uh, know in terms of science but whatever uh, the experience says that yes there is some kind of activation and you feel bright lights or some flames or something uh, you can visualize internally. Now, this is not with one person. Many, many people all over have experienced and described. So, uh, maybe I have not uh, done that kind of meditation. So, I cannot uh, say that I had experienced this. Way. And what is, what do you recommend? Exercises, is it? Is it requirement to exercise before mild exercise before meditation, or do you recommend workouts when should be done before meditation, after meditation? One who is doing regular gym. Yes, physical exercise should yeah. always be done after mental uh, after meditation. Always. Okay. Then, is it necessary? So if you if you at all want to do, then you do only simple yogic postures or asanas, not physical. Uh, workouts like which we do with you know uh, running or jogging or uh, weightlifting etc. Those kind of heavy things are not uh, advocated. What they mention, uh, yam niyam asan pranayam. Do some yogic postures, do pranayam, and then try to uh, meditate. So these are autonomic and endocrine system and flexibility exercise and then do pranayam and then do meditation. One pediatrician from Rajkot has asked how to do meditation while driving or working. That, 
if you do jain meditation or mindful meditation technique uh, you will be taught how to remain in a meditative state in all activities as i mentioned during eating also you are meditating you are driving you are meditating you are you are doing consultation you are meditating there is something which is internally connected to the uh, higher consciousness or universal consciousness that is also a very advanced technique and one can get that is possible and what is the effect on endorphin system endorphins are uh, increased during uh, meditation they say and therefore the pain is replaced by bliss that is one of the reasons why meditation is helpful in relieving pain all psychosomatic pains are also reduced partly due to effect on noradrenergic system and partly due to effect on uh, increase uh, endorphin can can we do with eyes open or eyes should always be closed that is well for the beginner this is a very important question when a beginner starts doing meditation uh, you know he won't be able to sustain he requires some or other kind of uh, uh, avalamban what we call some kind of base so therefore the looking of towards a object or a flame with open eyes to start with or listening to a sound to start with so giving some sensory input in whatever form and then when you advance into the system slowly cut down all the sensory inputs close your eyes close your ears close everything no external input and do gradually start internalizing i think that is a sequence that should be adapted for the beginner for an advanced person there is that doesn't make any difference whether you open the eye you close the eyes in the anapansati system it is always taught that you that the breathing system i mentioned in details right very very simple very effective system here you have to close the eyes first because you are focusing on something internal that is your breathing so if you keep two outputs at the same time you will be deranged so you just focus on your breathing that comes in and goes out therefore you have to shut down all the senses so depending on which system you are doing you should uh, start uh, you know using and those are there just one question or two question is brahma murta required for meditation that is what all indian spiritual texts say and it is ideal because of uh, so many reasons they say to the right from the physical aspects of ozone to where there is everything is steel Uh, your uh, electro geoelectric activity of the earth is also good magnetic part is also good so there are a lot of logical reasons i don't know whether there is science behind that but therefore in the when there is no distraction and because of the inherent peace in the surrounding you tend to go into the um, uh, meditation fast while there is a stressful atmosphere stressful time of the day you would try to log in you won't be able to do that so best thing is to select a time where there is automatically inherent peace and happiness outside and everything is still dr datta nagir has asked interesting question how do we know which method is good for us should we try everything and then decide and uh, he has also asked which method you do well uh i started first with the simple object meditation then i started with sound meditation which still i do like do chanting but when i do chanting you know there is a difference i take a couple of minutes here when you do as for example you say om rim arham nam then i don't just chant the word it is it is called mantra jap if you just chant but when i do mantra meditation my eyes are closed and i am just either I, when i am speaking mantra i have the vibration in front of me and then i focus on the vibration intonations etc aro avro so that is a vibration meditation or the dt of that mantra is arham that i look at i 
i visualize god in front of me or whatever god if i believe it or the meaning of the mantra like my whole existence bows down to the supreme energy and that continuously my every mantra i don't have any other thoughts i don't change i just become part of that mantra and that is called mantra meditation then i shifted slowly to vipassana my good friend dr jitu bhai inducted into me that so vipassana anapansati prekshadhyan these are the method which i do but is most of the time i do vipassana and anapansati but there are some at times i do mantra meditation or object meditation also so uh, it's not that i stay on one depending on the time of the day my personal mood and favorite how a seeker should know which is good for him yeah i'm coming to that as i mentioned in one of two slides that for a beginner first he should he or she should learn how to sit calm sitting calm is the first step then remaining completely aloof from all environment you shut down your mobile shut down your phone all connections are gone so that is the second sitting still and speechless third then you can either start with uh, sound meditation because it is avalamban there is an external uh, dependence so you can start because it will be easy for you as i mentioned omkar uh, do with omkar or listen to omkar or sit still and try to eliminate near sound and go to the distant most sound that is with difficulty we will try to understand how you can eliminate near more sounds and how you can listen to the distant more this is a sound meditation easier the other way is to do object meditation take uh, this is also simple sit in front of a uh, flame or uh, your photo of your deity and look into the eyes of that deity or the flame and constantly look into that as if you are part of the flame and don't allow any other thoughts or emotions to enter just be with the flame or the photo as if the continuous thought of your self is focus on that so the no other uh, distraction of your mind are allowed and that way you become part of the flame so that is the another way of uh, avalamban meditation then you can also start with the breathing meditation techniques as i said look into the breath that comes in and goes out make the mind the center at the tip of nose don't allow any thought or emotions or ego or attitude to come you and the thought you and the breath nothing else and when the mind wanders wanders here and there very calmly bring it back without criticizing without fighting with it and then a time will come when you'll be able to remain on your breath continuously for several seconds and then over months to several minutes so these are the three different sequences i can suggest for you those who are slightly more competent from beginning can also have thought meditation to start with simple thought like let there be peace all over and that that particular thought you just keep on constantly thinking about and then don't allow any other thought or other activity to enter into the mind don't speak any word just be there so this is how it goes or you just see the thoughts the volley of thoughts that is passes from your mind one after another without criticizing just study the nature and content of the thought that is also these are different four simpler techniques to my mind and those of you who have time and can go i would strongly recommend to take up vipassana 10 days course i am sure there will be a lot of centers around your area go there there is a more structured meditation daily there are 12 to 14 hours intense meditational uh, training courses going on interspersed with the lectures of goenka ji i am sure you will be benefited you will not be disappointed but you will require strong conviction to be there for because it's a very very uh, meticulous training program and i think you can do that this is a very structured program so it will not fall out so to summarize whatever you follow you stick to that and uh, you will get ultimate results we should have that conviction 
Correct. Thank you, sir. Thanks for that wonderful lecture. Many in the question answers I have said that it was a wonderful session. And uh, I once again thank you for this.